Hello everyone and welcome to For the Passion, Not the Fashion, based in the Netherlands. Today we're going to do a special interview with the mighty Fader about their upcoming show and more. They finally going to play live again for a special afternoon show on the 8th of August in Resonanswerk in Germany. There are limited tickets available to be there in person, but it's also going to be live streamed from all over the world. So everyone can be there, including you. You can find more info about this special show of Vader here below in the description and uh, yeah let's just start now with the interview of Vader let's go everyone welcome to for the passion not the fashion and today we are here with a peter from the mighty vader from, <laughs> 90, <Hello everybody. laughs> from 1983 from poland and yeah today we're going to talk about their special show on the 8th of august in germany and more so, welcome, Peter. I'm ready. Just what do you want to know? Yes. Hi. Nice to uh, have you here. Yes, yeah, a pleasure. It's yeah. a pleasure. Awesome. Yeah, do you know the venue you're going to play in the 8th of August? Uh, not really. Not really, but, you know, I know the, st I know the standard in Germany, so it should be cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> So you never played at uh, Raison's work before? I'm not. I don't remember. It okay. It might happen, but you know, it's we play, we play as many shows every year. Maybe not the last one. Uh, so I don't really remember all the places we were uh, playing it. So, but I'm sure it's gonna be cool. I'm not afraid of a venue or. You know, it's a smaller, bigger, whatever. So I'm always ready to play. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you played so many shows, so you can't remember all of the venue. Oh, yeah. Oh. So <laughs> that makes sense. And ever played a headline matinee afternoon show before? Uh, can I again? Because I, I didn't hear it. A headline matinee afternoon show before? An afternoon show? Oh, oh yeah. So you know, it, it was day. So we had a show uh, before noon. So uh, it's not too often in the whole history, but it happened. So actually, I I do prefer to play in the evenings. Okay. Uh, but actually, you know, the time does matter. So if there are fans, if there are people ready to see us to watch us, it's not a problem. Yeah, anyway, it's going to be a party, right? It will. <laughs> sure. <I'm glad. laughs> How are always the shows in uh, Germany? Uh, you know, there, there's no uh, a standard, you know, for shows in Germany, you know, and uh, there's no even a standard for each show in metal in, in the world. So in the same places, sometimes uh, you can uh expect just a standard show which is pretty easy sometimes uh, it's really crazy and sometimes it's more than crazy so uh i'm i'm always ready for crazy show so uh, so <laughs> I, I i i'm trying not to be really you know uh, shocked 
with the people jumping on your head, you know, <laughs> something like that, which still happens. Yeah, not as often as in 80s or 90s, but still happens, you know, sometimes, especially in South America, you know, some places. Yeah, but, you, ever, uh, you know, excuse me? Did you ever got hurt of the crowd surfing? Oh, many times. Really? I, I know, I, you know, I'm, I'm a singer. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm a guitarist, so at the same time, I need to hold my guitar, and I'm losing control of the microphone. So four times I lost my teeth because of heat of the microphone, because like of flying fans, you know. Oh. So it, it happens. Shit. Oh, <laughs> that's it's, me it's metal, you know. It's like a front line, you know. Yeah, well, I always thought it was just the audience that will get hurt on the front row, but also the artists. <laughs> you know, I, I choose metal uh, and I know what I deal with. So I'm uh, ready for a real fight. And I'm sure that metal show is not like a philharmonic orchestra, you know, performance. So like the people not sitting and watching and it happens just the people get crazy. You know, that's metal, you know, it's emotion. You know, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do the same, you know, and so it's, it's normal. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, let's see how the show will uh, will be the 8th of August. And as a teaser, can you already reveal some songs you're going to play live? Uh, some, I don't really, could, could you repeat it? I, I don't get meaning. Hmm? Uh, sorry? I'm, sorry, I, I'm sorry for the connection, but we had really, as I told you before, we had the storms and this connection is failing. And sometimes oh. I hit it's like every second word. And, you know, that's why I, I, I ask. No problem. Repeat. I can repeat myself. It's no problem. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, for, sorry for the audience. Just I'm trying to explain the situation, you know, that I'm not deaf yet. So if, if I'm <laughs> asking for repeating not because I'm deaf, it's because sometimes I get the bad connection and and all right <laughs> yeah for the audience uh peter had a big storm at this place so that's why the connection is a little bit off but we're still gonna yeah, that, have fun that's exactly what i'm trying to explain to people <laughs> watching us yeah it's totally fine yeah i asked uh if you can already reveal some songs you're gonna play live that night songs Yes. You know, I I usually don't like to uh, to just to say what are we gonna play because it's always good to leave something as a surprise. But yeah. for sure, I can t what I can tell. So uh, we will connect uh, the last album, which is still pretty fresh. It was. Uh, released uh, over one year ago, but uh, in these crazy times of pandemia, we had no chance to perform the album. So for fans, uh, this album is still not yet properly performed live. So definitely we're going to do uh, the, the, the part of the set list. It's going to be connected with uh, Solid Madness, which is our last album, the Fresh album. But because... Um, uh, uh, the fresh uh, album we're gonna release now, actually. Uh, this is a re-edition of De Profundis, our second album, uh, which was released uh, the 25 years ago. It's over that, yeah. so this is, this is really long time ago. And uh, because this album was a little bit forgotten because it was never released on a vinyl format. So uh, this is gonna be, uh, the real premiere in a vinyl format for this album. As I'm, I'm pretty much sure that many Vader fans are waiting for this re-release, this re-edition, a uh, long time. So uh, in July, uh, Nuclear Blast, which is going to be our uh, our released uh, the company, uh, the, our label, uh, they will care about everything. So uh, the, the, this album will be released in all formats and this album will be the huge part of the set list for, for our uh, tourings. And uh, for the show, we're gonna perform in Germany as well. 
So these two albums, De Profundis as a classic Vader and uh, the Soul of Madness, that's going to be the main part of, of the show. And the rest, of course, will be like all those uh, Vader hits, you know, known by our fans. So that's going to be pretty nice medley of uh, Vader. I'm sure about that. Nobody will be disappointed. I'm sure about that. Hey, nice. And when is going to be that uh, re-release? So uh, at the beginning of July, uh, the an act of darkness, which is a single. Uh, released uh, a month in front uh, of of uh, of De Profundis album. Okay. So uh, definitely, so th this will be available, and uh, uh, De Profundis uh, will be released uh, at the end of July. You know, I, you know, actually, this is still news, so I shouldn't even say that. But ooh, so we have gonna, to. Because yeah. because it's gonna it's gonna start like in days, so I'm sure that nobody gonna get a problem with that, you know. So <laughs> I can yeah. tell that. Oh well, thanks for sharing. We have a premiere now on this on our channel. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, let's uh, get also into some questions about you now. Uh, being a metal fan back in the Days in Poland was not so accepted. Having long hair was also not so accepted on your school. Uh, can you tell us some about these early days in Poland? How you experienced that and how is it now over there? You know, these were crazy days, but uh, yeah. that was all about metal, you know, and uh, I'm sure that the emotions and the uh, very special feeling of this music uh, make me a fan, you know. So I start. I started with Black Sabbath, actually. It was not even called a heavy metal back then, because I was uh, I was still in a, in a, in a uh, main school, this, the first school, you know, primary school. And uh, I was uh, like around 14, 15 years old, and that was the time when I... I hear the Black Sabbath, the first and the second album for the first time, and that was that was absolutely crazy. That was like the new music to me, and uh, that was the first step, you know. And I became a huge Black Sabbath fan, and I still am, you know, till today. But my education was going into extremity. So uh, every next step, every next band I discovered was more and more extreme, you know, and uh, uh, after Black Sabbath, Deep Purple and Uriah Heep, these bands, so I I discovered Motorhead and I discovered Saxon and Judas Priest, of course, and these bands actually made me a metal fan. So uh, since I heard uh, Screaming for Vengeance, British Steel, uh, like a Denim and Letter or Ace of Spades, uh, I started to play bass guitar and guitar at the same time. So actually these bands was my next step in metal education, next step as a fan of metal music, but also a musician as well. I That was a time when I was looking for uh, musicians to start a band. And that was a time when we started the band and we named it Vader. But when we started to play the metal music, uh, we wanted to be extreme. But in extremity was more like like those bands I mentioned, like Morehead, Priest, Maiden, you know. Yeah. And then and then uh, the middle of eighties came, and uh, with the middle of eighties came bands like Slayer, Metallica, and Creator, and the Destruction. Everything changed because like these bands like show that extremity means something more than just you know those bands we knew and we started to play faster more brutal more satanic as well because like the extremity meant different you know ways and for me i was totally orthodox in metal and uh since i became a huge slayer fan you know everything which was slower get in the back you know so <laughs> since then i I was just swallowing 
ever. Each band, which was like playing fast, and then blaster. It was, of course, like at the end of eighties. Then with Napalm Death, you know, with all those American bands like Possessed, you know, and then Morbid Angel and Big Side, and uh, the Blast Beats became a rule in metal, and uh, we were following that way. As a fan and as a musician, in Vader already, and you know, in Poland, uh, back then, especially in in, in the middle of eighties till nineties, it was really hard to get everything because we had no st- music stores. The you no know, the the metal scene, the underground scene was really about to be born. So Vader was a part of those young uh, bands who started to uh, make uh, the independent scene because like. Nobody was really interested to support bands like us playing like a stupid fast music, uh, growling so nobody could understand what you're singing about or screaming about. We did not care about it. We just wanted to play, get crazy on stage. So we started to play small shows and invite each other just to uh, in, in small places, you know. And there was no private clubs back then. So we were still behind the Iron Curtain. So Paul was still under let's say communism so uh, we had just some official places like uh yacht houses you know but they had to show what's going on even if they did not like it even if they did not support it they had to show what's going on around so that was the only chance we we could perform on stage of course far from professionalism but uh, but still we could and we had friends who came just to Mosh in front of stage. Sometimes they had to be slowed down by security guys because the security did not understand, you know, the moshing and, you know, like this kind of uh, acting, you know, they said this is aggression, you know, <laughs> it's very different. So actually, uh, uh, Vader and like more bands uh, from those days, uh, we started the underground scene, who then became more known and some of those bands survived the times and some of the, those bands joined us a bit later and now we know those bands like 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 hey like behemoth like chris agony we had more bands who gave up in the meantime they did not that you know maybe the passion was not that strong like like mine or bands who just could fight the problems you know but it was not easy you know, because like many people was just laughing at us, like they did not believe that the music we do will survive more than one or two years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but if you have passion, uh, if you really love the music, you nobody can stop you. <laughs> so that was uh, the whole story of Vader. We survived that time, the hard times, just because we really, really loved the music and really wanted to play. And, you know, trends was not really... It's something we're looking at, you know, we wanted to play the music trends that came later helped us a bit to get into, you know, to sign a deal. But uh, we always, I got that feeling that we always were living like parallel to all what's happening. Sometimes the, the, you know, our ways was crossing with the trends. Then Vader was like more pushed, uh, sometimes not, but we're still doing, we're still acting. We're not Ben who just stopped to exist and then we came back you know no we still active you know and still active and maybe uh that was main reason why we still have fans maybe like a third generation of fans who really love what we do and uh, they support us and they follow us you know and they don't really care about like we are like huge uh, popular or support by media or whatever they just love the music we do you know that's all, and that's the. I think that's the best that happened for uh, Vader, from from to me as a fan and as a musician. That we have uh, fans that just know what to expect from Vader. They always support us. <laughs> yes, yeah. Vader is still going uh, strong. <laughs> yeah, we are strong because metal is strong, you know. So <laughs> we're metal fans. You know? Yeah. We just. And we you just were, bring what we feel. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And you were one of the first death metal bands, right? 
So death metal, thrash metal is just a name of a, of, of a genre. But uh, when we started to play thrash metal, it was more like a name for a band who so was kind of new and uh, like a rebel, even among the metalheads. Yeah. Because we were growling, we we're like fast, we we're brutal, satanic, you know. So uh, even uh, for fans of uh, classic metal bands, we we're like kind of like, wow, you are too brutal. You know, so the brutality and the trend for brutality came a bit later. Okay. And, uh, that that's you know all you know all these steps in history. So all it for a for a huge moment, it was just all about like progress of uh, extremity. Then came the change, and the metal started to uh, go in a different directions, not just brutality but also like different kind of melody. So today we have something like death me- melodic death metal, with, which in the past was curiosity. It was yeah. like death metal and melody. Nah, it <laughs> not, doesn't fit together. But today, uh, you know, we have the, the metal. It's so different. In, even extreme metal is just very, very different. But that's, you know, so that, that all was creating in the, at least a decade, you know. And the metal, this is five decades already, you know. So uh, it's 50 years, actually, you can say, of metal explosion, metal evolution, you know. So that'd be weird if that would not so different differences and some different feelings in each next generation of metalheads, you know. Yeah, today everything is possible in the metal. Every kind of song yes, together. Like for example, Ginger. You know, they put even reggae in their metal music. So yeah, it can go in every direction now. Yeah, you know, uh, to me, I'm I'm rather old school. I maybe don't. Uh, I started with Black Sabbath, but yeah. unfortunately, I do not remember the days when they started. I was just too young. But uh, I started in the 80s, so I still remember the golden decades, you know, 80s and 90s, it's a golden time for metal. I think everything which was created before 80s was, was like I name it, was uh, like an uh, influence for, yeah. uh, for the metal. But what happened after 90s was more like just interpretation of what was already created. So it's, it's not really necessary to you know to to do anything more we can just interpret it in in a different way what we do the new bands do but the metal the core of metal is already created so we don't really need to change it because then we change the the soul of the music which is not going to be the same metal that's why i started with with an, with the naming myself the old school I uh, started with metal and I respect the main source, why the metal was special and why we call it metal. So today, some bands, some styles where they still call metal would not be called metal in the 80s or 90s. And uh, that's the huge difference between the new generation of metalheads and those old school like me. You know, I, Of course, because I'm musicians, I share the stage with many bands the young bands, the old bands. So I absolutely respect everybody who plays the, the, the music, even if I do not really understand or if I you don't really dig into that. But I just respect people who want to just perform themselves, explode with emotions on stage. You know, I don't even understand it, but i absolutely happy when I see people who have fun on stage because the, first of all, uh, you need to have fun when you perform, you play the music, because that's the only way, especially in metal. But as I said, I'm still wearing Black Sabbath, Priest, Slayer music, because for me, these bands, they they made me, and they created the the lava of metal music, and uh, this is not going to change in the future. Even if the bands like Slayer, they they not probably not going to perform live anymore, same with Black Sabbath, but they they left something which is not going to be underrated. They left the soul on stage, and 
the next bands will always take a little bit from that spirit, you know. Yeah, we're made <laughs> the way to it's like um, us, it's like Vader and many old bands. Yeah, yeah. that's that's Maybe beautiful in that. For other metal genres and for other metal bands that came after it. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And the very first songs of Vader were in the Polish language, right? Yes, we started. Uh, we started in Poland. So uh, our singer uh, was singing in Polish, growling in Polish, screaming in Polish. Okay. But then, uh, you know, we found out uh, when this uh, trading tape madness started in the world, and Poland joined that madness. So to exist in the world, you had to sing in English. Even if nobody understand what you singing about, English was like international, that everybody, in Germany, uh, in China, in, in, in Brazil, you know, in Russia, everybody who won, wanted to join the trade tech training company, you know, this, this madness, and wanted to make a demo tape that everybody gonna enjoy in the world. So English was like first step. That's why in, in 88, we, uh, we prepared the material uh, which was recorded a year later, and we named it Necrolust. And that was actually the very first official in studio recorded demo tape for Vader. Also, the next uh, that that was the, the actually the real beginning for Vader because that was the first tape recorded with dark drumming, and uh, the Vader most fans knows today actually started in those days in those years in 1988 89. And that was the first time we were, I was singing in English because that was also a huge change because I had to start to sing because our earlier singer, I just could not teach him English. Now he was really hard to, in languages. And, <laughs> and uh, so actually that I, I was pushed just to sing. <laughs> I didn't like to be a singer in a band. But uh, when we recorded this first tape, you know, I then started to sing live and play. And it's just like this until today. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But, for, but firstly, honestly, first, I didn't like to sing. I wanted to be a guitarist and I didn't like just to, to, you know, to share emotions between singing and playing. But, you know, after first and second year, when I started to play and sing on stage, that was all right. It's just okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can reach a bigger audience with uh, singing in English, you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I that what I said. Like that was uh, that was uh, trendy those days, and uh, uh, you know, last years that was like a uh, opposite way. Uh, the the national languages became more popular in each country, so there's more and more metal bands singing in Polish in Poland, in German in Germany, Russian in Russia, and you know, and all these countries. So uh, this is like like a more like a different trend. But yeah. I think English English, especially you know, especially for growling bands. Uh, this is this is just easy to pronounce when you're screaming, so maybe that's one of those reasons why the English is just uh, the most popular metal. Because when you scream, anyway, screaming is is more like a like a beer of emotions more than beer of uh, words. You know, uh, metal, uh, the extreme metal was all about uh, screaming more than giving the words. If you want to know what the singer is screaming about, you got a booklet. You can just take a look at that and see what that. But life, emotional screams, different tones was always, uh, to me and to uh, extreme fan, metal fans, more important than to understand what you're screaming about. You know what I mean? It's just like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's about the feeling, the emotions. Yeah. Emotions, yeah. Yes. And were you good from the very start with growling or did you really have to learn it and practice? Oh, 
you know, you know, when I started to sing in English, actually, I had to uh, learn the lines. Of course, I, I knew the very, very basic things, but I was far from say that I knew the language, you know. Okay. Uh, my knowledge of it, my knowledge of English came later when we started to tour together with American bands, German bands, because English became like a communication, the language to communicate between ourselves. And, uh, and you know, when you're speaking, when you have to speak, that's the best, you know. And uh, uh, I learned German in school when I was like, when I had to choose the language, you know. Russian was mandatory still when I was in school but when uh, it came to, to to take a choice to uh, next to the secondary language I chose German and I was pretty good back then but then you know when I started to travel English became the language to communicate even between us and the German bands so I really forgot a lot about the German which is pity and uh, but I started to know more about the English you know and then years or in, if not decades later when I was writing the lyrics in English I was thinking in this language you know in the beginning I just translated what I was writing in Polish uh, and I was using some just verses sometimes from the other bands just yeah. to use verses about emotional pictures you know so I, it was like a Lego to put together some words <laughs> to give emotions I wanted to perform, you know, in the beginning. You know. But I'm sure that many bands did it. If you if you read the lines of metal lyrics, especially in the 80s, of many young bands, you can see like very, very same, like 50%, it's the same lines. Because it's just the same words, you know, the same feelings. You know. oh, and uh, to scream, it's just about that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, now your English is perfect, right? Maybe not perfect, but way more better than in the past, <laughs> I yeah. hope. Yeah, I think so, I think so. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and the name uh, Vader comes from the Star Wars movies. Do you know actually what it means in the Netherlands? I do. It means father. <laughs> yes, yes, father, dad, yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember, the, I remember the story when we were uh, about to play in the city of Hangelo. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, close to the border with Germany. And uh, there was like a posters everywhere. It was like a Vader's dog. It's like, wow. So that's good support, really good promotion. But then it came that uh, it was just Father's Day. And there was some, some like, uh, some fasts, you know, around about, like, uh, Father's Day, like, information, they, you know, for everybody. It was national. And, uh, but uh, when we saw Vader name, so it sounded like, oh, uh, so we come and so everybody knows that Vader came, the band. <laughs> but it was all about Father's Day in Dutch. Father's, yeah. father's dog. Yeah, very funny. Yeah, yeah. When I first listened to Vader, um, I thought first it was a band from uh, the Netherlands. So I was always <laughs> calling your band. Uh, yeah, I, I like uh, Father. You know, I was always saying that. Yeah, <laughs> but later I it's found funny. out that it was Vader. Yeah, funny. It's, it's pretty funny. Uh, just coincidence that we became a father for for so many metal bands and not yeah. just in Poland. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <After years. laughs> exactly. Yeah, and uh, something personal. Uh, I know you collect a lot of World War items. Uh, what's all there in that collection? And what are the items you are most proud about having them? Oh, you know the the oldest the original stuff I have because the, I think uh, the huge the, the biggest collection I have you know, we we could talk about it, is is my collection of iron crosses. Okay. And uh, it's pretty symbolic also in in metal. You know that since Lemmy or uh, was using does this symbol 
So it became kind of like a symbolic, you know, because of supporting war or something. It's just just nice symbol and used by many, you know. Uh, it looks good on a leather jacket as well, you know. So maybe that's why as well, who knows. But whatever. And uh, my, uh, it's just combination of, of uh, my uh, interest in the, into uh, uh, the war, into uh, some memorabilia of, of like tanks and everything. So then uh, one of my friends uh, just infected we, me, me with a uh, collection of iron crosses. So first crosses I had, I had as a gift from fans in Germany and Czech and, and, and in the US. And I just kept it because it's just, uh, you know, uh, 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 a gift. And uh, I didn't even know that this became a part of my huge collection of iron crosses later on. Now I had totally uh, it's around, it's around 500 of them original. And it's a comb- because the f- I do not have the very first one, which was created actually by uh, uh, the Prussian emperor back in the 19th century. And the very first one uh, was in, in 1813. And uh, the first edition, I still do not have it, but I have the second one, which was uh, edited in uh, in uh, eight, uh, 1870, I had three crosses from a second war between Prussia and France, original, and that's probably the oldest uh, pieces I have in my collection. And uh, the the most, and I, I of course, I'm proud of them, but uh, it's really hard to get crosses which is very personal connected. And I have a one. Uh, this is a Iron Cross, the first class Iron Cross uh, from the First World War, which which was uh, 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 the owner was uh, the the Ubert officer, U-boat officer from First World War, which was then in the Second World War became a staff officer from a German Totenkopf division fighting in France in 1940. So that, that's, that's uh, because I know that, because this is, I get a certificate for that. Uh, of course, this was not cheap, but this is uh, like actually like one of the, the biggest in my collection because it's straight directly connected to the person, the name person, you know, so that's really usually hard because usually all the crosses I have, you don't know who had it. It's bought probably from a second, sometimes, you know, from somebody, somebody gave me, but uh, I don't really know if this is just exactly the cross given for to this special pr- proper person, you know. I had a papers, documents uh, for uh, per person, but then I don't have the crosses. For that. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, ah, very impressive. Yeah, 500 items, that's a lot. To have in a collection. Is, you know, yeah, collection. That's, I got some, as I said, like I, I collect everything which is uh, connected with the theme Iron Cross. So okay. I have the, the, the medals, the Iron Crosses. I have the documents. Uh, I have uh, the, the mini crosses, which was just uh, more uh, used uh, on a civil uh, clothing, you know, uh, I have some uh, some etuis made for crosses, private made by by uh, specialities, special uh, uh, people. You know, I don't know who I made them. Special, special. That was a special order. Special order. And uh, of course, uh, many books, especially uh, about uh, talking about like the collector books and. Uh, hard to get books you know about this team so all about this you know so that's actually the last 10 years of collection because my my uh, collection is not that old it's around a decade but uh, i'm crazy but when i start uh, when i have a passion to that i'm crazy about it so we usually start to dig in 
into information. And I usually start with the books, start in information. Internet, of course, gives you now a lot of you know information and connection with the people who collect friends in the whole world. So it's it gives everything much easier today. It's much easier than 50 years ago, let's say. So maybe today uh, to get the original uh, Iron Cross, it's not uh, it's not that easy like in the past, but and it's not that cheap like in the past. But uh, information about it's fake or not, it's it's easy to get now. So people know more, and it's uh, it's much harder to fool people with fakes today more than in the past. You know. Yeah, and, where and it's a lot. Ones? Trust me, it's a lot of fake medals, fake iron crosses that looks even better than originals. You know? So <laughs> that's you need to be careful if you're yeah. a collector. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah. And where do you find all this stuff nowadays? Do you find it on eBay or? As well, as well. But uh, you know, uh, just to make sure that uh, you're not fooled by fakes, so yeah. it's always easy to uh, to. Uh, buy uh, or to trade medals with friends who are into that in uh, in the stores that are dedicated to this. Like, of course, you you have to pay more than on eBay store, but you are hundred percent sure you get a certificate of authenticity. Authenticity, so it's always easier and better and uh, easier to to be sure that this is not fake. To buy to pay more. But to buy in a in a good source, you know, in the good stores when people know that they what they have and it's just easy. And of course, I still got the the many many of those crosses I collect. They came from friends. Uh, they came from fans as well. You know, they know about my passion, about my collection. So uh, many of those, they try just to, to make me a gift and uh, to 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 you know. Make me happy. <laughs> Sometimes we trade the Vader stuff for process or for some medals like that, you know, which is fair, nice, because I can make happy some fans and they make happy. So it's just trading or happiness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, for the fans uh, that are watching, if you want to give Peter a present at one of his shows, <laughs> you know what to give. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's really hard now because it's, it's, it's just... Uh, just very few uh, producers or just names, uh, special like numbers of, uh, I don't know how to explain that in English, uh, of crosses I do not have in my collection, but mm -hmm. still. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it also uh, comes back uh, in your lyrics about uh, war. Uh, ever thought about becoming uh, military, maybe? Uh, you know what, the war, because the war is still a part of humanity, uh, even if, of course, we do not like this, but this is part of the history, mm -hmm. we like it or not. And uh, this theme is pretty often a theme uh, of Vader lyrics, just yeah. uh, because Vader is not, we're not Sabaton. We're not a band that talks straight about it in historical meaning. Uh, I talk about uh, the war, about this problem of hate, of these things, uh, putting this in between the lines, yeah. hiding this uh, into behind some stories I create. So in Vader, if we're talking about war, it's usually not talked straight. It's mostly talked as a story. If I if I want to as an example, if I want to say uh, I give you a story, uh, uh, there there was a song called Hexen Castle. I name it even in German as a as a witch's pot. That's that's the German is Hexen Castle, English is witch's pot. And uh, the story, if you read it in the lyrics, is more about you, you can just get the feeling that this is about some witchcraft about some uh, uh, stories uh, from uh, mid middle, uh, like from centuries ago when some women or some witches were uh, persecuted by, by people because 
they were women or they wanted to do something different because the Christian church those days was so political, strong that they just wanted to control everything. So the best control is to scare people, you know, to give them death and just to kill all those who not want to join the Christian church and those who wanted to do in their own way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but the the other the other story behind the story is the Second World War, and all this what was called a castle in German, and a pretty known from Eastern France when one army was encircled by the other army and then killed, you know, just like this, and that was called a castle, uh, and, you know, and. That was also about that. So actually, story in a story. One story uh, was uh, behind the other story. So I do like this sometimes. It was the same uh, in the song called Demons, uh, which is about like some demons when you read the lyrics. But I wanted just to express myself and talk about the tanks and uh, about war machines with a human inside. <laughs> and... I just uh, created the story and named this a Code Demons. It was actually about uh, the tanks, which is just the horror war machines, but it's nothing without the soul. And the soul is a human inside who's driving it, who's creating it. And those who s sent them to kill, you know what I mean? So I... I, I do not, uh, I, of course, I get a feeling I want to say about that. I want to say about a feeling about humanity, about the good and bad part of that. But usually I created this weird stories about it. I'm not talking straight. I'm talking as a stories, you know. That's actually something I always love in the, in the metal. And uh, I do prefer to talk this more poetic the style, a more poetic way than to take political straight way like some bands like I don't know, like hard hardcore bands, punk bands, they really like to say straight, hit like yeah. I, fuck you politics, you know I you do, I really like I do not uh, like to talk like this I really like more this this um, uh, romantic version of that Yes. The romantic version was always, to me, a part of metal. I was talking, you know, all these stories about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, better. <laughs> Make a knot, it's just how I do. You know, you know, some people like this, the other people like that. But uh, I like to uh, create the stories, you know. I like to use the poetic language more rather than, than this straight, you know, language. Sometimes in some lyrics I did it, but not that much, not that often, like all this more poetic version, you know, romantic version. Yeah, and then can you also leave it up more for the interpretation, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, very much. Now you got a point, huh? Yeah, you got a point. Uh, interpretation, imagination, this is something which is like fading away in the new generation, I got the feeling. And uh, uh, I mean, for me, especially in the past, when I was living in a, a gray, boring world of Poland uh, in communism, when there was nothing really happening around, and yeah. uh, imagination and some interpretation of what I was reading about was, was something that kept me alive, gave me power, you know. I created the world inside, and even if I did not accept what was going around, I could just live in my own world. And that's why metal was so good to me, and that's why metal I choose metal as my music for my soul, because metal gave me a chance. It was like a power, like energy to my imagination, just to make this power field around, you know, this bad world around, you know, and still does. Yeah, metal is like therapy, I always say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And now it is more accepted, right? In Poland, the metal and the metal culture and everything, right? 
you know, metal became in the whole world a part of the culture, I think. You know, if yeah. you see Metallica, Vans of Sabaton, you know, they uh, at least that popular like like Michael Jackson and Madonna were in the past, you know, and they were like a pop music, right? So metal with, uh, actually they created something which became a pop, pop culture now, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, when we started, I think Metallica, Lars Ulrich or James Hadwin, they started and they were in the 80s, a symbol of extremity, a symbol of something absolutely different than even if then even if classic music you know back then they probably they were not even dreaming about they will became a part of pop culture you know? a few decades later of course you know but it happened and uh, uh, metal became uh, definitely more popular so today uh, metal for some young people even became a way to gain success you know, which is not good always, you know, because uh, uh, when we started to play metal, success was the last thing we were thinking about, you know. Uh, we could, maybe we were dreaming about becoming a, a star on stage, be a crazy guy, in the, you know, on the real stage, you know, playing like priest or something like that. But success was something not connected with metal those days <laughs> and because uh, in the meantime so many years passed away so uh, metal became something which is a way easy for for new generation of uh, of course i mean it's it might be a way to be a star like a famous man famous women you know it's just somebody famous a celebrate and uh, i'm sure that many uh, young guys, uh, they choose metal not because they really love metal, they, because they found it a way to achieve the success. You know, mm. and that's you know that's that's a price. You know, if it's it's easier to organize a metal show today, you get magazines, the hundreds of magazines around the world about metal, everything, but uh, the price is losing that elite feeling you know in that and uh, you know how to explain it to to be to be fair with everybody you know the old school and the new school because I do not the last thing I want to do is just to to uh, separate people and to uh, to name these and that metal to me is still metal it was also something which just unite us as a music and and when I was feeling as an extreme metal fan, I was feeling like elite because everybody hated this music. So I that was like a power to me. Yeah. But I, but I never wanted to be different. You know, I I was happy to play the music and to hear the music. Many people did not disliked so much. But when we were meeting fans that was listening Scorpions or somebody else. It was not just this is the good reason to beat somebody. <laughs> it was good meaning just to chat and then beat <laughs> whose band is better. But the the you know the the final result, even if we like some, because it's happened, we sometimes like Slayer is better. No, Priest is better, and then. <laughs> but after that, we still like okay, brother. Let's listen this and that because we still metal brothers and. Fuck the rest, you know. <laughs> we had enough enemies around. We don't need to become enemy because we listen to different bands, you know. Excellent. And I still think that this is the best way, you know. Even if, it's because, you know, we are different characters. Not every people are the same steady, you know. There's some people who just cannot just control emotions. And they need to just go forward, ah, you know. And uh, but there's still people, you know. We just need to talk to them. Just sometimes, you know, life is life. <laughs> you know? Better than stay away behind computers and don't talk. Just don't meet together and don't uh, just have fun on shows together. Because uh, uh, metal was first of all life. Metal was meeting in life, you know. That's why pandemia was so hard, you know, for metalheads 
for us, uh, not because we stayed, we, we, we could not perform. The problem was we could not meet together with people, you know, with fans. That's the best. And I really hope that that uh, this is going to be end soon and uh, the life get back to the normal wave and the life will be life. Live streaming for metal is it's not going to be real metal. This is more to survive for metal, more to survive for bands, more to survive for fans, to have something, you know. Yeah. But the real metal is still the real life, you know, real show, you know, touching, feeling, you know, you know this sweat, you know, hearing, you know, the, the, the scream, you know, the noise. This is metal. Yeah, exactly. It's nice to have the opportunity in those days to have the live stream concerts, 8th of August. You but know, we did it as well, even if we do not like it. But as I said, this the scene, the metal yeah. scene, they need to survive. And if uh, there will be no anything, you know, if streaming is the only thing, so why not? But definitely this is not going to be uh, equivalent of the real metal. No. This is just for now, for this bad time of pandemia. But uh, we definitely need to get back to the real life soon. You know? And we will. Yeah, exactly. There's a tour coming up, so... Uh... <laughs> Can't wait! <laughs> yes, yes. And what do you think of uh, the death metal scene nowadays? It's still hard. It's still uh, evolving. Yeah. It's strong. What can I say? You know, <laughs> it's good to be a part of that. You know? Yeah, and you know, what of the new death metal bands? Have you checked them out? Or uh, death metal is death metal. I know that death metal uh, is the same like heavy metal. I was mentioning before, it's evolving, it's changing, and I do not need to like and to to understand everything, but. Uh, as I said before, I'm absolutely happy that this is evolving, that there are people with passion. They're following their own way, their own feeling. That's the most important thing. There are still many other bands just to enjoy. And uh, if you have the choice, that's even better. You know? We did not have that choice in the 80s. That's why we were just more straight in the bands we loved. You know? But today there's more choice, and I really believe that all those bands that play extreme death metal, death metal and extreme metal, extreme music at all, they do it because they need it, they feel it, you know, because that's the only way. And I do not need anything else just to see bands and to see that fight in the eyes when they play live, you know. That's the, the other, that's the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the next question, you kind of answered it already in the beginning. Uh, but I'm going to ask anyway, is the audience different than it used to be? You know, um, met the real metal fans, they're still the same because they're metal fans, you know. And that's why I love them. And that's why Vader still perform and still active for so many years, because they still have metal fans. Yeah. The real metal fan is a loyal fan. He knows everything. He supports you as long as you loyal with them, with the music you do. You may expect them every time, you know, that's the best audience ever. All right, last uh, two questions. Um, any new material already in the making for a new city? Well, we already mentioned the re-release, but any new songs already in the making? You know, I, I, I uh, also mentioned that uh, our new album was released uh, over a year ago, but was not performed, you know, to me. The real, uh, you know, the procedure, you know, the real uh, promotion is uh, going on tour. And uh, I know and I'm, I'm so happy that So You Need Madness uh, uh, was named uh, with so good words by fans, you know, and uh, just now we need to perform this album live, you know, we need to bring this album on stage. Yeah. And not think about the next one already. We had time. We were home and we could just think and about the new album, but why should they think about the next album if the last one was still yet 
on the shelf, you know. It's yeah. you know, as as far as the album is not uh performed live, it's like still new album, you know. I uh, am thinking and even we booked a studio at the end of the year for something like a EP just to refresh the formula. And uh, when we will start uh, the new season in the 2022nd, so we're going to add something fresh. Uh, uh, and that's why, you know, the idea to go in the studio uh, to record, but not for full length. Full length album, maybe in next year, you know, maybe. But uh, it doesn't make sense, you know, uh, to, to think about the new album if the last one is still new. You know, practically, right? And you know the re-releases. You know, uh, we are old bands, and we have the next generation of metalheads uh, who knows us from the last releases and uh, do not know much about the first albums. That's why uh, De Profund is the second album, uh, which uh, is like 25 years old already, and is going to be re-released now. It's going to be something new for them, for many of them. You know. Of course, not for diehard fans. Diehard fans, they know everything about Vader, even demo tapes, everything. But there are fans that, uh, you know, they, they, they are familiarized with Vader with the last albums. And they saw us, let's say, like five years ago for the first time. And uh, the last releases might be something new, something not, not really known, especially on stage. And, uh, you know, it's nothing like bringing the old stuff for new generation alive. That's why uh, if we make the re-release like De Profundis, we want to bring those songs also live back, you know, to, to, to the new generation, especially for new generations. And uh, every next year now, we'll bring, you know, the next anniversary. So probably we try just to make the same system and just to follow the same style like we do now with the profundis like we, we record the next album we try to bring at the same time something which was well recorded like 25 or 30 years ago what? just to refresh the formula you know, to mix to mix old with the new it's good to have such opportunity <laughs> yes yes and you didn't have the full opportunity to promote your last album so yeah you no know, it's, it's believe me or not but I never ever thought that I will be playing in a band that is around 40 years old. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's even now sounds crazy to me. But if we are that old, you know, it's good to bring back alive all those live, you know, all those old songs from the past. There's still many of those we never play live. So why not, you know, to use opportunity to bring it so we we can make happy. Also, those old fans who never listened to those songs, they wanted, but they never had a chance because, you know, we always had to choice which new songs we're going to choose for the set list to perform because it's not possible, you know, just to play the whole albums after fifth album, let's say, because it's just too many songs. You know, it's not possible. And everybody wants to listen to this or that or that. So we have to find a solution and trust me, it's not easy. No? That's always a problem behind every next sh tour. Which songs to add, you know? <laughs> yeah, that must be difficult to choose from so many albums, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, you've been doing this already from 1983. So did you never get tired of playing for so long? Or was there never a time you thought, okay, I quit now? Yeah. No. What can I? No, no. If I if I would think about quitting, I would do that years before, years ago. Uh, now metal is is in my DNA code, so I can't just quit. You know, I can't change the formula. I, I you know, I don't want to. Think about that in this way. You know, as far as we have fans, and there's still fans, like a new generation of fans that enjoy Vader, you know, even if they like, they could be my sons or even grandsons, but as far as they enjoy the music, you know, 
there is make sense them just to to do it you know to play you know especially because if we old guys we old school guys old school metal band so we still think a little bit different way when the modern uh, the new generation good bands you know playing this kind of music so it's, it's always good mix especially uh, if you know and you have to understand it even if i don't want it that every next year we're going to lose bands you know from the old you know yeah. times and that's sad but that's true you know we live to die you know and i'm sorry it's like some bad squeaks, some legends just became legends, but they're not going to perform live anymore. So as long as we and bands from our generation will survive, we should be happy <laughs> and we should enjoy. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that many of those young new force of metal music, they know that... Uh, it's better to go and watch these old bands because, I don't know, it might be the last show, you know. Yeah, you never know. That's life. Life is hard, but it's straight. Well, it's great yeah. that you're not thinking about yeah. uh, stopping with uh, metal. Oh, That's a comforting I'm, words for the fans. I know, and uh, I'm happy because I know, and that's that's really, really nice to know. And I know uh, that uh, in the meantime, Vader and uh, with our music, we infected so many next generation of musicians, next bands, and they will bear that metal spirit further and further. You know, like Black Sabbath and Priest infected us with the music, and we were bearing that further in the history. The next generation will do the same. And that's nice, you know, that's, that's evolution. You know? It's good to know. The worst would be to know that uh, after us, nobody will just bring it farther, you know. But I'm sure that, because I see, I watch that, I see the new generations with the same passion we had when we were like teenagers. And they're going to do this in the future for the next and next generations. Exactly. Metal will uh, never die. <laughs> metal infected metal you know me infected metal and metal in will infect metal you know this with metal exactly. <laughs> that's what's so special in this music yeah well thank you so much uh peter for this interview and <laughs> Pleasure. and one last thing can we strike a pose together for the thumbnail of the video mm -hmm. what can we strike a pose together for the thumbnail of the video, a picture? Just okay. by doing this or something? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All That's right. Good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, for the people uh, that were watching, uh, like I already mentioned, the show 8th of August in the Resonance Werk in Germany, but can be watched everywhere. Uh, since it's a special live stream concert, so go and buy that ticket. It is, it is stream, but it's a part of a real tour. And uh, let's just stream be, be, be for all of you like an invitation for the next time, you know. And uh, this is really a good opportunity for all those who cannot join us in the flesh on that show to see what's going on and will be fun, will be hell. I promise. I promise. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be a hell of a party. <laughs> Definitely. But that's after. <laughs> yes. And the rest of the tour is going to be that as well, of course. OK, well, thank you so much, Peter, again. And uh, yeah, have a great day today. Okay. Well, rest of the day. And you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>